So I think I managed to make my case of why Osamu Tezaki is the best and most important director that's worked in anime, but in that entire series, I failed to mention one tiny bit of information. Now, I had this huge paragraph written going title by title of all these series, the, their history of the licensing and all that, but I realize this is a video, so I could, I could probably just fucking show you. So here are 20 of Osama Tezaki's most important titles, or the titles that I think are most important for you to watch. Here are the movies that are currently available to stream. Here are the anime that are currently available to buy. Here are the anime you could have bought at one point, but are currently now out of print. And here are the anime that have never gotten an official release, at least in the United States. Yeah, so out of these 20 anime, five are currently available legally, seven are currently out of print, and eight have never been made available in the United States. So you might be wondering, wait, Astro Boy was totally released in the United States at one point? Yes, it was. Just the first hundred episodes, and Osama Tezaki only episode directed episodes way past a hundred. That was the only title I included that had episode direction from him, just because I figured it was significant enough because of the first. But if you want me to include Dororo, which is available in the United States, I could just throw in Hajime Ningen Gyatruus to counteract it, which is not even subtitled, let alone available here. Speaking of not fully subtitled yet, Aim for the Ace, super important, popular tennis series, not fully available in English yet. Ace 2 is almost done, final stage is not even started yet, and that's the last that we have before any of it gets fully translated into English, let alone available here. The same had to be said about Gamba for years before somebody finally fan-subbed it back in 2019. One thing I should note, Ashton of Joe is technically fully available to watch in the United States just by watching a compilation movie of season one that is available from Discotech. But it's not the full TV series. <laughs> so, I mean, if you want to support this official release, maybe we could have a chance to get the actual series at some point. Not sure. I only included one Lupin special, which was my favorite one, but I could include the other four, which are available in the United States. But if I did that, A, it would be saturated with Lupin, and B, I could just throw in the Hamtaro movies, which are none of them are available in the United States. They're in bad condition to begin with. And lastly, I did want to mention Onisma A did have a release at one point. It was crowdfunded in 2014 and got kind of a limited release. The company folded in 2015 and had to burn all their remaining stock, so... Technically, it's a little out of print. Ah! Okay. I gotta do a little... A decisive majority. A vast majority if you include the out-of-print titles. I didn't happen to lay out my top five favorite Dazaki anime, and I know some people were asking that, so... My top five would be Joe, Hakage Densetsu, Aim for the Ace, Onisima A, and Gamba no Boken. Currently, you can't watch any of these anime in their entirety, legally, easily. The closest is Joe, thank god. And if I were to lay out the best titles that are available, that would be Golgo, followed by Cobra Movie, followed by Blackjack Movie, followed by Lupin. But you notice these are all movies, right? Th none of his series are available. All of these out-of-print titles, like we used to have Rose of Versailles available for a long time, and you could probably still find the DVDs. All of them are in this gray area of tried but failed. Because clearly, if they were successful titles, they would have extended the license or renewed it, and we would have kept having it legally available. That's why we have Bebop still available. That's why we have Yu Yu Hakusho still available. Because these are profitable titles, and they're going to keep making them available for the public. But Rose of Versailles, 
Space Cobra, Onisima A. Eh, they had a good run. When you take a closer look at these out-of-print titles, and even the ones that are currently available, you notice in the marketing, like the title and the cover, that Dazaki himself, as a director, is not even mentioned. Almost at all. They might say, visionary director Osama Dazaki, and uh, yeah, he did this one show. That's not even available in the West. <laughs> like, you can't say in the West, he directed Aim for the Ace, because nobody knows what that show is, apparently. It was never made available here. It's not even fully translated. So, of course, it's not an influential title to the people in the West. So you can't sell him in any tangible way. It's especially strange when you compare that to how often and seemingly intrinsic it is to name drop other famous anime directors. Think of how often Mamoru Oshii's name gets dropped when someone mentions Ghosts in the Shell or Pat Labor or Angel's Egg. You almost can't find discussion of Neon Genesis Evangelion without somebody bringing up Hideki Anno. Rightfully so. The man created it entirely himself. They, re they just recently replaced the OP credits of the original Evangelion series from the first shot showing Gainax to showing his name. That's how important he is to this series. But even if he's just key animating something for Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, people will bring that up because people know Hideaki Anno and how important he is. These aren't just Studio Ghibli movies. They're Hayao Miyazaki movies. Oh, and I guess that other guy too. Shinkai, 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 Hosoda, Hosoda, Hosoda. Hey, did you know Satoshi Kon worked on this Jojo? Instead, this is the kind of treatment that Osama Dezaki gets in the West. That shows up 20 minutes into Bennett the Sage's review of Space Adventure Cobra. That's the only time he mentions Osama Dezaki in that 30 minute video. I've looked for other times that he has mentioned Dezaki at some point, and I think he's only ever done it one other time. I'm not going to bog this video down with criticizing his Blackjack movie video. Let's, let's just say it's not good. But while Sage is one of the most prominent voices in this community of retro anime, other sites haven't acted much different. When Nozomi secured the rights for Rose of Versailles back in 2013, which was like a big deal, all anyone could seem to talk about was that they secured the rights to the anime from manga author Ryoko Ikeda. They kept bringing up Ryoko Ikeda's name, but not once mentioned Osama Dezaki. Even though it wasn't the manga that was becoming accessible, we wouldn't get the manga until this year, seven years later. I've shown you how cool Space Cobra is, right? Here's the promotional material they used for it. Look appealing to you? How about this one? Wanna watch it now? How about these covers for Unisima A? Oh boy, can't wait! Now, to be fair, this might be a stipulation on the part of the Japanese licensor, and they, they forced them to use this particular material. Doesn't make much difference to me, I still think it's poor packaging. Look at this crusty-ass visual that everyone uses for a movie that looks like this! Wow, what a great poster! I only wish the anime looked just as good as that! People say that his anime just didn't take off. His anime are buried treasure, that they're not-so-classic relics. I find this crudely disrespectful given his impact on this medium, and something has to be done about it. I refuse to let this video end the same way everyone else's does when there's an anime shown that isn't available. I'm sick and tired of having to shrug my shoulders like, it's not available, guess you're gonna have to find it, nothing I can do about it, I'm just a fan after all. I think if people actually got to watch his anime, they would become fans of him just as much as I have. I'm not special in my fandom of Osama Dezaki. I don't consider myself a super fan because the quality is just that apparent to me. I wouldn't need to make this series. Everyone would know how important he is. The series, if you know his work, is very surface level in comparison. Whatever dent I've made in the West's perception of this director is tiny compared to what could be accomplished if his anime were just put in front of people. As much as these folks have been responsible for the visibility of his works in the West, we can't keep praying to the discotheque gods that they'll license what we want. It doesn't work like that, and it shouldn't work like that. I know a lot of fans who are cynical towards this group, the old guard, if you will, but at least they're trying. 
at least they are accomplishing something way more than any of us. The fact that Space Adventure Cobra is the first anime film to be released in 4K before the Ghibli films, before Akira, an Osama Dezaki film is the first to be released in 4K, is absolutely remarkable. And that's what I want to be doing, instead of complaining on Twitter. There's a part of me where I'm, I'm, I'm constantly paranoid. I'm constantly paranoid that I'm going to get something wrong. I'm always paranoid that at some level, what I'm saying, it just like doesn't matter. to do this different because I wanted to challenge myself uh, and do some stuff that I haven't done before. Um, it's the beginning of a new decade. I'm 25 right now. I'll be 35 at the end of the decade. Uh, so a lot of my youth and like kind of the bulk of my life, uh, this is it. So I wanted to record something make something that I can be proud of to represent where I am now so I know where I'm going. Yeah. I was doing theater, mainly because I couldn't keep my mouth shut. Reflecting on it, I definitely did it for me. I enjoyed performing and being with other people and putting on a show, and I still do. I really do. But I do get the sense that I was doing it to entertain people first and foremost. And of course I did other stuff. I read books, watched movies. I played video games, but way later, and only Nintendo. And largely in high school, started to watch anime. But theater was something that I liked doing and was decent at, I thought. So that's what I decided to, to pursue when I graduated and went to college. So I was going to school for theater, originally for math, but I wasn't that good at it. Uh, so, <laughs> so I ended up doing theater, and I liked it a lot. Um, but while I was in th in school, college, that was around the time that I was getting more and more into anime, uh, and it was a myriad of things that uh, really sunk me into it. I could probably do a whole different video about my actual fandom but during college uh one of my my favorite movies still was um nausicaa of the valley of the wind and my friends uh in college they they knew who Mahayo miyazaki was and studio ghibli and all that and they may have seen a couple of his movies but none of them had seen nausicaa because 
it's not exactly one of his more popular works. Uh, so I wanted to fix that. <laughs> so I had the, I had the movie and one night I invited one of my friends to come over to my dorm and watch it with him. And we did. Uh, and I watched the whole thing with him and he really enjoyed it. And then, uh, the day after I was telling a few other friends that I did this thing with, with him last night and it kind of led to, do you want to go see it? Uh, do you want to, do you want to watch it too? Uh, and they said, yeah. And, and I watched that movie with them <laughs> my, in my dorm a second night. And then like two nights had gone by after that. And then I did it again, the same dorm, same group, different group of people. So I've been watching it three times in a week now. And then I remember like the day after that, hanging out in our dining hall and uh, telling all these other people that I had other, other friends that uh I had watched this movie three times with three different people, three different groups of people. And I'm like, do you guys want to watch it? And they're like, sure. It didn't have anything more to do. It was kind of towards the dinner time. They had all, all their classes were done. Uh, so I ran and grabbed my computer and, and the movie and we watched it in the dining hall uh, with more people. Um, and I took a lot of joy in that, in um, being able to share this art that was bigger than myself. It was bigger than anything I could produce um, to people. And, and uh, I like being able to see other people enjoy what I've enjoyed. And um, that's what I care about the most, I've discovered. I would go on to be my school's anime club president uh, for three years and accumulating more of our libraries so that more people could rent manga and anime uh, to experience. And then we took it upon ourselves to make sure that we were choosing stuff that people hadn't seen before. Um, not like the standard, like, oh, I've seen the show already, but I, you know, um, I was willing to, to do that uh, so that more people were able to experience what I've experienced. And uh, that whole idea of this art being kind of bigger than myself and um, not having as much of an opportunity uh, compared to some of this other media um, is something that I want to champion in my life. And if I can do that professionally is, is, um, is what I was thinking of wanting to do, really. By the time I graduated college in theater, um, I wasn't as interested in theater anymore as much as I was with anime. Um, there wasn't a, there hasn't been a day since probably 2015 that I haven't thought of anime at least once. I'm going to take off my jacket because I, I want a continuity. <laughs> Coats in the shot. college I was not ready to go into the workforce yet uh, mainly for one because I was kind of disillusioned to theater and um, I wasn't comfortable making that my career yet uh, if at all so it was right before I was graduating did I hear about AmeriCorps uh, <laughs> it was a 10-month federal program that uh, I was away for a while um, which you might have noticed as a I may have been talked about it and had some sort of absence so some of you kind of already know about it uh, but it was around that time, particularly January of last year, where I became really obsessed with the idea of media preservation and licensing and uh, getting into that business. 
uh, starting to become really possessed of like, you know, getting these titles that are on Crunchyroll that don't have physical releases yet that could just go away at any time. They can take them down for whatever reason um, without any warning. And it's happened already. But then, you know, we've had such a glut in the past couple of years. Um, what happens to these shows that don't get a physical release um, or any sort of release after after they've, they're already done and everyone has kind of forgotten about them? Uh, shows like Tonkatsu DJ Agataro, uh, Mahojin Guru Guru, these shows are on Crunchyroll, but how long are they going to be there? Uh, is there anyone who's going to pick them up? Shogun Roku Rakugo Shinju is on Crunchyroll, but doesn't have a physical release. Sentai licensed it, but we don't know when that's going to come out. Um, but these shows are just kind of stuck in this limbo, and I felt terrified at not being able to legally show these show this to people um i don't want to resort to the legal means and being able to just show it to a handful of people uh my reach is only so far anyone's reach who who pirates things is only going to get them so far it's not going to spread it to new audiences but currently these shows aren't being spread to new audiences as they are either uh because Crunchyroll is so busy getting the next shows advertised that are being made and this is a giant backlog that is just sitting there so i remember just laying in my bed uh thinking about this going to you know falling asleep to it you know um calling my friend saying hey i want to start a licensing company when i get out of here having no idea how to do that or any connections or any knowledge whatsoever um but just kind of the the tickling spark but i have to do something it wasn't around that time but definitely in the past month or so that i started to get very disillusioned to fandom as something to occupy your time with making tier lists making collages i love making collages and i love making tier lists but and i love making videos um but how much of this is really going to push the industry forward? How much of this is going to get new fans? You know, it kind of just sustains the old ones uh, for however long it takes until they move on to something else. I know that I'm going to be a lifelong anime fan because of the way I was brought into it and uh, the way I've since immersed myself in it. But there's people dropping like flies all the time. Uh, that you know they're very surface level fans and they, they like watch a show here and there but never commit to anything and they don't become like super fans you know and i guess i'm not looking for everyone to be a super fan i guess like people in my sphere but i think the more people who are like that the more chance it is it gets to in front of mainstream audiences uh who then further validate it and, and make it cool and all of us get to enjoy things um, that I found enjoyment in. wondering where we are uh, I'm at the camp that I've worked at for eight years 
uh, over the summer. I live here and uh, have worked a variety of jobs and I love it here. <laughs> but when I finished up the latest summer here, uh, I didn't really have much else to do. I was looking for work, uh, but it was the first time that I wasn't committed to any long-term thing like school or AmeriCorps or camp. Um, so it was kind of scary for me. Um, but around that time, miraculously, uh, I managed to get my foot in the door in the industry that I have grown to care about a lot. And I don't want to jeopardize it too much because I only just got it. <laughs> I've been um, pretty cautious, but really taking it um, as seriously as possible and uh, doing my best and constantly asking uh, questions and um, learning more. So, you know, I don't want to say anything too much that dates this too hard or jeopardizes any of that because uh, it's something I really care about and want to pursue um, for what I want to do with my life, uh, at least one of the things. Um, but that's something I'm looking forward to uh, for this next decade. Um, and that's what I want to do. And not so much uh, as a fan. I feel like I've had my stint as a anime fan. Um, I can still be, obviously. But I think I really want to turn my attention as much as possible to really making this serious. A lot of the people in my sphere famously uh, do this for a job. They do YouTube and they get the ad revenue or the Patreon or whatever, and they can make this their living. Uh, and they're slowly, I think, realizing that there's more opportunity in doing stuff in the industry itself. Uh, some of them are taking voice acting roles and uh, a lot of ad advertising and uh, promoting, promoting stuff um, and being in these advertisements and everything and it's really exciting and uh, I think that's something they should pursue. For me, what I talk about and what I care about is never going to get the numbers on YouTube. Now don't get me wrong, I still want to make videos, um, but I want to find a way to use this platform I have, however tiny it is at the moment, um, to better the community in a tangible way. Not a lot of people who are working in the industry legitimately are on YouTube. They don't really have the time. Um, fair. <laughs> or whatever, you know. They don't really know or care that much. And that's okay. Um, but I figure I'm in a unique opportunity uh, to be able to sort of do both. Um, so, well, I guess what I'm saying is I... I want to take YouTube seriously to the extent of what I actually want to take seriously, which is helping the industry out as much as possible.
Hope you enjoyed me hiking for 30 minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. It felt good to finally act personal in a video. For the record, I am enjoying myself earning a living, working for the anime industry. It can be a thankless task, but I'm eager to give back what anime's already given me. This might mean easing up on the video making, but I already have some pretty dope stuff in the works, and I'll still be making weekly content on my second channel, if you want to check that out. If you'd like to support me in taking this seriously, you can become a patron like these folks who make this video possible, including A Tree Outside, Cam, El Poserino, Fluke Morph, Gin Kotaku, Jawburst, Nicholas Allen, Phosphor, Rikafag, Rob, Seaweed Ambassador, Tengun, Tippy Mango, and Yellow Cheese. I'm thinking of starting some group watches, fellas. What do you say? <laughs> I'll see you again.